Good morning and welcome back to the reading of God's Word. Now we are looking into, as for this video here, we are kind of in the heart now of the divided kingdom, both the northern and southern kingdoms, as, they, as we have already discussed in the last video. And so we, here we come to uh, 2 Kings chapters 1 through 8 in this reading. And so we finished up 1 Kings with Jehoshaphat being the king in Judah and Azahiah, the son of Ahab, become the king of Israel uh, in the 17th year of Jehoshaphat. Now Jehoshaphat followed his father Asa and did right what was in uh, the sight of the Lord. Azahiah was a very evil king and he only reigned for two years and he had a, an accident and fell through the lattice and, and you'll read where he finally died. Um, and then what we see is Joram becomes king in Israel after, after him. Now backing up in back into 1 Kings again, we met Elijah who spent a lot of time against Ahab and Jezebel. So that king, you'll read a lot. You read a lot about that. You'll see the uh, as the as the battle goes on, basically it's against idolatry because Ahab Jezebel was obviously a worshiper of Baal, and Ahab would then uh, follow along with that. So so probably Jezebel was the one that was pulling all of the shots that during that whole kingdom. But here in Second Kings in uh, chapter two, now beginning here, what we are going to read most of in this reading, all of this reading is the translation of Elijah being, being uh, taken into heaven by the chariot of fire, we call the translation there. And the uh, ministry moves from Elijah to Elisha. And so with all of that being taken place here, we, it's simply a movement of one prophet to the next here, along with, as we discussed last uh, video, was there's still a lot of other prophets involved in this as well. But here is the, the recording of basically in the rest of the chapters, uh, the, the works of Elisha. Now in chapter three, we, we find that Joram, uh, the Moab uh, rebels against Israel. Joram goes to war, finally defeats Moab. That's just a discussion there in chapter three, but in chapters four through eight, we see the greatest part of Elisha's ministry. You'll read an awful lot about Elisha here as he continues into his ministry. And there are at least 14 different miracles that are performed by him uh, in these readings. And what we see here is the parting of the Jordan River. He makes the springs of water drinkable. He sends bears to punish the youth that were mocking him. Uh, he floods the ditches to confuse the Moabites. He multiplies the widow's oil so that she can con continue to make bread. The Shunammite woman has a son, that son dies, and he resurrects that son. So that's another miracle there. Prophes he, he purifies the uh, poisoned stew, and he heals Naaman's leprosy. He gives Gazi is struck with leprosy. He floats the axe head. He gives special sights to the messengers of the king. And he blinds the Aramean army. And even when he died and was buried, another man was buried in the same grave. And the other man was raised. He was resurrected because of the bones of Elijah. Even after he was dead, he was performing miracles. So we see that there's a lot there that we're going to read about Elijah. So as we read through this and through Chronicles, really what we're going to find is two major things, and that's the wars between the kingdoms and the warnings of the prophets against the idol worship. Wars against kingdoms, and both within, against each other, the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom fighting each other, and then fighting with each other against other kingdoms, and each one fighting against other kingdoms outside. All of this is in line with what God said was going to happen. So we see that. And, it, and even then, think about it. Even though the ark is in the temple of Solomon, okay, so it's still there in Jerusalem. And we read, but we read very little about the priest and the religious leadership over all the people, even though it is there and is active to some degree. But we see that a lot of these kings are having a major impact on the religion, on their, on their uh, Judean religion there. 
So we see some of the kings really uh, in, in a lot of false Baal prophets get involved here and, and it continues on a downward climb, decline. Uh, they're placing idols, uh, pagan uh, pagan idols, in the temple where you know some in the king where the kings of Judah are actually doing part of this. And then almost all of the kings of Israel, the northern kingdom, were bad and evil, and and they just continue on into a downward slide as well. So as you read this week, watch the downward trend of both kingdoms because we're moving into towards the end of. Uh, the divided kingdom and this will end eventually as we get to the end of first kings and then we'll see it all over again in chronicles but we will see uh, the end of god's patience we will run through all of his warnings through the prophets and finally his judgments that he said he was going to produce and they did and that will end in both of the exiles First with the exile of the northern kingdom in 722 by the Assyrians, and then again in 589 with the southern kingdom, the kingdom of Judah. So as you read through this, pray that God gives you the insight into what is being uh, told to us about how they rejected God as being king over them and what God said was going to happen to them. And we watch what is happening to them as we move towards the end of this. And with that, may God have uh, his blessings on the reading of his word.